Greetings adventurers and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. On this week, I have such an exciting episode for you. So one of our high tier level Patreon members exercised their rights and asked us for a specific episode. And looking at it here, it says Dog of War Armor, which I couldn't be more excited about. It combines two of the things I like the most, making armor and my dog. Look how freaking cute he is, oh my God. But I'm into it. We have this really cool design that Maddie made here. I got my dog ready. I got the leather. What's that? God of God of War. Not dog. Nope. You know what? I'm over invested. It's going to be the dog of war. So get ready for an epic and cute overload as we level up this skill. So let's get this dog y'all armored up like his warrior ancestors. I'm going to be honest. I really don't know much about my own ancestry, to be honest with you. At least I didn't before I partnered with today's sponsor, My Heritage. See what I did there? Whole thing was a segue, smooth as silk. Though honestly, this is a really cool service. My Heritage is one of those like at-home DNA tests that reveals like your unique ethnic background, living relatives that you had around that you didn't even know you had, and just a whole bunch of really cool services that tell you more about you. Using it was super easy. Everything you need comes in the box with really clear and simple to follow directions. All you gotta do is swab the inside of your cheek to get all that tasty, tasty DNA. Then stick it in the equipped media and send it back on its way. But while I was waiting for those results to come back, I went ahead and played with some of those other features. Like this one here that can colorize and animate old family photos. I used this one here of my great, great granddaddy, Kit Kittington. This was him on an expedition to discover some ancient runes. Okay, and now the results are in. Let's see what we got. This is the first time I've seen them. I am... Okay, Northwest, North and West European. I guess I could see that coming here. So just European. Finnish, very cool. Makes that, that cooks that I just did like part of the chorus. Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. I actually did not know that. I had no idea. And a pretty good percentage too. 2.3 Scandinavian. Ah, yes. The Viking blood flows somewhat. It, it's in there. It's in there. And 1.4% Greek and South Italian. I genuinely had no idea about that. I tell you what, though, with the Scandinavian and the Greek, this whole God of War thing, we're starting to pan out here. I basically am Kratos. Science. This was honestly a lot of fun and maybe learn some things that I 100% I didn't know about myself. If you'd like to give this a try and see where your roots come from, My Heritage has a promotion right now. Just click the link in the description box and use the coupon code for free shipping. And as an added bonus, you can start a 30-day free trial of MyHeritage's best subscription for family history research. And then enjoy a 50% discount if you decide to continue it after that. Man, I want one of these for a dog now. That'd be dope. All right, so first things first, we have to take some measurements of our subject. And look at what a good boy he is. Oh, man. He's putting up with a lot with me here. <laughs> He's being very good. So you could just go ahead and like use some fabric tape measure to measure around the neck, around kind of the, the waist or stomach area, and then the, the distance between them. Almost like if you were like measuring out a bracer for yourself. But I decided to go an even easier route and just use some of this folded up newsprint paper that I lined up the fold right along his spine. Then I simply marked where his arm and shoulder openings would be, as well as how far down the rib cage I wanted it to go. Now I stopped right where his rib cage kind of ends, which makes it look a little bit short, but also gives him the freedom to move so it doesn't like dig into him whenever he moves around. Wanna make, wanna make it comfortable for a little guy, he's so cute. This is for sure just like a fast and dirty way to measure it, but seems to work. Using those little marks as my guide, I started to go ahead and rough out that shape, making kind of a horse saddle appearance where it would wrap around the top of his body. And these little arm straps here to wrap around kind of in front of his chest, under his neck, and also underneath his belly area. Then I simply cut out that folded piece of paper to give myself a symmetrical design. Then I was back onto the table to test it on it. And I was actually really happy with the fit of this thing. I thought I'd have to like fiddle with it a few more times, but it actually fell exactly where I wanted it to. Now that's just the top section though. I actually want this thing to operate as a working harness. So I needed there to be a bottom section for it to strap onto. So it wasn't just like uncomfortable belts going across them. To get the measurements for this, I actually just end up using this harness that I already have. It has this kind of roughly uppercase I shape that like wraps around his chest and comfortably wraps around his belly. Do notice though, I did keep those little arms on the sides longer just cause I didn't know how far I needed them to wrap around or where I wanted the like 
straps to lie. I didn't want any buckles or anything to be right against his skin. So I'd rather those be a little bit longer so that I can adjust for that. All right, so the leather I'm using for this is this really sweet nine ounce leather that I got from Tandy. I actually got it when I did my own chest armor here. So we're wearing the same piece of leather in our armor, which is just great. Not only that, but it's one of their more expensive pieces. So he's got like fancy leather armor. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going with that nine ounces. It's a little bit heavy, but it's also rugged. So it's going to be able to like put up with his shenanigans when he's running through the underbrush when I take him on walks. I just positioned my template here where I can get the most out of that leather and traced it in with a lead pencil. Honestly, when you're using something like a lead pencil on the leather, it doesn't really leave a mark so much as it leaves an, an indent. So you can use an awl too if you want it. Once that was all laid out, I went back in with a sharp razor knife and cut out my shape. Then I, of course, did the exact same thing with the underlayment piece, cutting that out as well. Finally, I cut these two panels here, figuring they can act as like layered pieces of armor, kind of making them look like a tiny little pill bug. Altogether, it should overlap like this, giving them some pretty good coverage and some thick armor pieces. Also, those pieces on top of each other add a lot of extra layering and depth that I get to play with for the overall design. In general, it's just gonna make it look a little less flat and more interesting. Finally, I cut a bunch of three quarter inch straps of various lengths, just cause I didn't know how long those buckles would have to be. And also anywhere else I might need a strap. It's just nice to have them at the ready. Now, just a heads up, we've covered a lot of leather on this channel and we've already covered like a whole bunch of the basics. So if you find that I'm saying stuff or talking about techniques that you haven't learned yet, definitely check out this playlist up here to catch up. After that, it was all the same stuff you usually do with leather. Using an edge beveler to make sure they're nice and round and then going back in with my slicker brush to get it nice and smooth. Can't have any rough edges against the skin of the goodest boy. Not ever. Story time. On almost every D&D character I have, I try to get like a dog, like an animal companion. Act like you don't try to get an animal companion too. Everybody loves an animal companion. Anyways, I end up loving them so much that I just leave them at home. I can't bring them on, can't bring them on quest because what if something happens to them? I just can't take it. Another party member could die, but not my dog. <laughs> okay, so I don't want this just to be kind of flat armor. I want to have some cool designs with it. And I want them to be on theme. So my dog's name is Cerberus. So something along those lines of like a mighty three-headed dog would be fantastic. So to start laying this out, I again folded up a piece of newsprint and then laid one of those panels halfway on it, tracing around the edge. This way I only have to draw one half of a design and then I can use it to trace and cut it all out so it's exactly symmetrical. For my design, I sketched in like half of one of the dog's heads and then the other one looking off to the side. Then I flipped the whole thing over and traced right through it so I can make sure it's exactly the same on the other side. This way when I open it up, my three-headed dog is looking back at us. This I simply cut out and now I have a nice working template to use. Just so you know, I didn't name him Cerberus like crazy vicious dog. When we got him, he was fairly like malnourished. He's a rescue. So his body was really small, but his head had grown like to full dog size. Basically he had a giant head. So we're like, that could be three heads. <laughs> That's such a big head. <laughs> so Cerberus it is. He's grown into it since and he's adorable. Now, since I did everything on newsprint, there's kind of a problem. In that newsprint is, is a really thin paper. And if I get it wet, it's just going to turn to mush. And the way you get a design onto leather to tool it is you wet the leather, you lay the paper on it, and you trace on through. So to help protect the paper, I just got some of this clear sticky stuff that you usually put on like shelves or whatnot. This I just stuck right onto my table over the picture. Then I unpeeled it and flipped the whole thing over. Finally sticking another piece onto the back of that and then cutting the whole thing out. This leaves me with a completely waterproof, strong, and reusable template. With that all set up, I cased my leather. With that all set up, I cased my leather with a wet sponge and then secured my template into place with some tape. Then I busted out a stylus and carefully traced my image. You don't have to push very hard at all to get that indentation into the leather so that when I remove the template, everything's left behind. I also decided to use my wing divider just to make a neat little border around the whole thing. Then it was time for the swivel knife to cut it all into place and make it permanent. Once I had my image all cut in and looking cool, it was time to bust out my beveler stamp and actually make an indentation to bring all that detail to the foreground while making the background kind of sink back. I really wanted that whole design to stick out as much as possible during the finished product, so I decided to add a background texture to it. To do that, I just use this little pebbler background, at least that's what I call it. It's got a bunch of tiny holes in it, and when you hammer it, it actually makes it look like a pebbled surface. Really cool finish. I just use it all along the background, tapping it as I moved. Doing this made short work of covering the entire back and just making the whole thing look a lot more interesting. 
I then used that same fold it and trace it technique to make this vaguely Viking knot shaped kind of design with this paw in the middle. I'm not gonna lie, I was really proud of the little, the little paw I stuck in the middle. I thought that was real cute. <laughs> then I did all the same things, cutting it in with my knife, hitting it with the beveler, and then just putting that background texture on the whole piece. So because of that shape of that background, or it's kind of like rounded a little bit, it makes the background when you look at it more of a distance and you can't pick out the small details, almost look like it is a, like a hammered metal. It's a really cool look. And then when I layer them on top of each other, now that is the design I'm looking for. That looks slick. Now I won't bore you with the same process all over again. For the rest of the piece, I did the same exact thing, just adding a border and then using that backgrounder on everything. So that when I layer it all together, oh my God, it's gonna be so cool. I love how it looks and the little layers are fantastic. And when you see how it all kind of goes together, I could really finally get the actual like visual of what it's gonna be. I was getting so excited at this point. All right, so now that we have all of the design in, we can finally start to drop in some color and see what this thing's gonna look like. First, I went around the whole border of it with a Fibings, Feebings, I always get that wrong. Fibings or Feebings. Anyways, this stuff, dark brown pro dye. That I just applied with a simple sponge brush. I also took this opportunity to dye all of those straps a dark brown as well. Then I went back in with a dauber and dyed all of the rest of the piece a light brown. This goes on kind of dark, but when it dries, it gives me a really nice contrast between the two colors. Like, look at that. That's gonna look so slick. Now again, I said I wanted this to be a working harness, like something you can actually use for your dog, right? Not just for looks. So for that to happen though, I really wanted to add little like D-rings or something to it so that I had a place to put his leash onto. So in order to facilitate that, I actually just cut this kind of six inch long piece of strap here and rounded off the edges. The thought is to use that to thread through the D-ring and then fold in half to hold it in place. To actually attach it to the armor itself, I just lined it up above the Cerberus's head where I thought it would go, and then used this sharp chisel to make a nice straight line about the width of that strap. Now the thought is I want it to be like an opening for those straps to go through, right? So next I busted out these hole punches and put it at each end of that line I just cut to give me the nice rounded ends of that opening. Then I finished it off with the chisel on the other side of those holes, giving me this nice wide opening with circular ends. I feel like that was a really roundabout way to explain everything I just did, but you saw what happened. You can totally just cut it out if you don't have all those tools. But doing this, I'm able to pass that folded up strap through there, leaving me with this exposed D-ring sticking out. It also leaves me with a good amount of strap underneath there so I can put a lot of security behind it because if he pulls against it, I don't wanna like pop a rivet if it's only held on by one rivet and make it so he can run away. Though he won't, he's really well trained. He doesn't run away, but still, I'd rather have it not need it than need it not have it. Now, before I start actually assembling this thing, there is one last thing I wanted to do. I really wanted to make all those designs pop and make it look as epic as possible. So to that end, I busted out some of this metallic paint that's specifically made to go into areas that are supposed to be flexible. Things like foam armor, you know, soft surfaces that move a lot, like leather. Using this, I was able to paint out my design, really making it pop and look like a piece of metal that's been added to it. I also did the same thing for the Cerberus's eyes to really make it stand out. Then to add that final layer of depth and kind of meld everything together, I added on this dark brown antique paste. By rubbing this into the leather and then rubbing it back off, all of the lowest points hold on to a lot more of that pigmentation. And it really makes that background become deep and all of the lines stand out. Finally, I hit the whole thing with a rosalyn to seal it and protect it. Now I didn't get the footage on it for some reason, but the other end of it, the flesh side of the leather, I actually just took this little piece of wax here and scribbled it all over the back. It's non-toxic and it's a good way to help that side of the leather get waterproof. Because let's face it, he's gonna be rolling in things and running into puddles, it's just what he does. All right, it's finally time to start putting this thing together. First thing I did was take that top panel and put it into place where it will go on that upper harness. Then I punched some holes up in the corners and use some rapid rivets just to lock those edges into place. Now before locking the bottom of that into place, I took my little D-ring strap and I punched three holes going down the center. Then I went ahead and slid it through that space I had cut open earlier above the Cerberus's heads and used those holes as guidelines so I could punch more holes in the main body and then lock the whole thing in with three rivets. Now if your dog is prone to pulling or if you're gonna be like selling this to other people or whatever, I would definitely recommend also staddle stitching in there. Staddle stitching, saddle stitching. 
But yeah, by throwing in some saddle stitches, that's gonna be the strongest thing you can do, and it won't pop off like a rivet might. But I'm secure knowing my dog, and also if he managed to pop through three of those and then also slide that piece of leather out, by then I'm thinking I'm gonna be on him. <laughs> Once that's in place, I just slide in the next panel of the leather and lock everything together with some more rivets. Cool, so that all assembled, I'm actually gonna start making the straps that's gonna connect the top piece to the bottom piece. These ended up just being simple eight inch straps that I riveted into place. Again, using three rivets. I repeated this for each one of the little arms I had sticking up. Okay, so for the front section, I decided that I wanted to have another ring in place because sometimes I like to alternate between like having him hooked in the back and having him hooked in the front depending on what we're doing. So for example, if I take him out on like a paddle board, the little, little foot connection thing, it'll be easier to have him in the front than it would bike over the top and wrapping around him. But because there is limited room right here on that piece, I needed to find a way to make the actual straps where the buckles were gonna sit be part of that ring assembly, right? And I came up with something that actually looks really cool. I just took two of those straps and I crossed them. And then I used these little half round chisels to cut out a semicircle in the top and bottom of them. By doing this, it gives me a nice space to have a ring sit in. It also has cool like armor strap look to it. I think it looks really neat. Then I just folded the ends of those straps over and installed some buckles onto them. Then I positioned them where they go onto the chest piece there and marked out their holes with an awl. After that, it was an easy job to go back in with my hole punch to get those holes out and then lock the whole thing in place with some rapid rivets. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm really, really happy with how that came out. At first, I was thinking of putting some kind of like intricate design down here or whatever, but I wanted it to stay clean because those straps took up a lot of room. But that little X design there totally does it for me. I love that. Now for the last thing, I just needed a strap to go on the very like lower part of his belly to connect that to the upper as well. Due to this, I just had one small piece of strap that I put buckles on either end of and punched some holes for the rivets to go into. And once that was put in place and the whole like shell was put together, look at how cool this thing is. You can totally see how it's gonna lay out on him. Oh, it's gonna be so great. I'm not gonna lie. This is probably one of the best little pieces of armor I've ever made. It's so cool. That being said, as dope as this looks, and honestly, look at it, it's so cool. As dope as it looks, I really, I wanted to go overboard at this point. I wanted him to look like, like a barbarian or like just something epic, really, really cool. So, I decided we'd add a little bit of fur to this, but I wanted to make it removable. We're in New England and it gets like 90 degrees here in the summer and gets really cold in the winter. So this needed to be something I can take off during those hotter days, but put back on once it gets cold. But since we're going extra, I wanted to do something nice. So the fur I'm using is this rabbit pelt here that I got from Tanby. To start with, I laid the rabbit pelt down and then put the underside of the harness over it so I can get a lay for how it should fit. Then holding it in place, I flip the entire thing over so I can get at the underside of the fur. Generally, whenever you're cutting fur like this, you want to cut through the skin side and with like as little uh, damage to the fur as possible. If you cut through the fur, you're going to end up with like bad haircut marks, right? Like straight lines. It's just not going to look natural. So using an X-Acto blade, I just cut some thin lines the width of the straps themselves. I did this for each one of the straps. This way, I can just loop those straps through that opening and use those to hold the fur into place. Then I just went back through it and removed any of that extra fur out of the way. Basically, I didn't want to leave a lot of fur up here because I was afraid it would like droop down as he was walking because there's, there's nothing there to hold that up, you know? And I'm sorry, look at how cool that looks. I then did the same thing with the top part, and look at that! It's like this awesome barbarian, so cool! I am over the moon with how dope this looks. But at this point, it's just eye candy. Let's see how, let's see how it looks on him. Oh my god, he's so cute! It fits perfectly. I couldn't have asked for this to fit this dog any better. It stays tight to him, all the little bits and pieces of it work. The fur is so damn cute and it stays put. I'm sorry. I know I've said I know I've said so damn cute just too many times during this episode, but honestly, look at him. He's got a little got a little suit of armor now. Oh, it's wonderful. Okay, that's my project. I hope you liked it as much as I liked making it. I had a good time with this piece. Okay, so now we have something really exciting for you. We're going to announce the winners of our level three of the Level Up Lock competition. If you're new here and you don't know what that is, you can check out this video right here explaining it all. Basically, it's a competition held by Bergsnyder, purveyor of fine medieval wares, that'll have one of you coming with us to Germany to the largest LARP in the world, Conquest. So without much further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to the good folks at Bergsnyder to tell us who won. 
Hello everyone and welcome to Level Up Lab, the end of level 3, the third season that we're currently in. We're here at Burg Schneider. My name is Niklas, I'm from the product development team and we're just so excited to finally unveil what our winners of the participants of level 3 Level Up Lab challenge are. Thanks to all who participated here, we had so many amazing costumes we had to look through. We were really debating who's gonna make it in this season. Again, thanks to every participant that we had along the way here. We were so excited about every costume that came up as part of an extension of your character and that showed your dedication and your fire that you had in you for your costumes and this hobby and this community as a whole. And we're super excited to unveil what comes next because that's a big one. So without further ado, here are our picks. For our third place, we picked Jana Kempe with her amazing alteration of our Skolderham cowl Björn and her Kauf Bertram that she used. And she also used leftovers from last level to put a lining into the cowl and make it more comfy for winter times or in general when it gets cold outside. There's some nice mineral embroidery on the back of it, which looks amazing. Like, I know for myself, embroidery takes a lot of time. I, I, I have a kind of spot in my heart for a nice embroidery. So in general, well done, nicely executed, well deserved third place. Thank you, Jana. Okay, for our second place we have Amberly Walker and she completely blew us away because she made the night scar wearable on our Morpheus cloak and she, as I said, she used a Morpheus cloak for this in black on which she painted a whole bunch of star constellations and moon phases with UV light and it's even visible in the dark if you want to. She even mapped out the constellations so that they actually make star signs which was pretty impressive for me. Yeah, and also fits her character well so in my opinion also very well designed second place. Thank you so much. As in the videos before that, we also crowned my winners of honorable mentions here and we have John Anderson here and he used one of our cowls, one of our Googles, the uh, tube Google Alex, which he cut up and put a button placket right on the side of it to get easier in and out. Suits his character very well. And for our winner of Level Up Lab Level 3, we have Ikiki. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating in level 3 of this Level Up Lab challenge and you've really blown it out of the park here. We have the Magician's Head Edis, which she used and she put a whole lot of stones and brass work onto there and she made like a whole, a whole halo, a whole brass halo around this Magician's Head, which really shows a noble and dedicated magician's life. And is one of the headpieces that you could even consider a hero or staple piece. Very well deserved first place. Thank you so much. Okay, so that wraps it up for level three of Level Up Lab. Again, thanks so much to each and every one of you that has come forward, that has shown their dedication, shown their skills, shown new materials, new techniques, new character ideas, and made all of our lab brighter and more colorful. Thank you all so much. We are so happy and just completely blown away with the participation of this community. And the grand prize winner will not be chosen by costuming, but by story. Each of our previous winners will have the chance to tell us how their character got to Mythodea. Most new players come to Mythodea via the Crimson Company, advanced sailors, skilled cartographers, kind of scoundrels to be honest, but they are the way from sea to the mainland. So you can't wait to hear your story and how you went on your big next adventure. Keep an eye on the Discord of Skill Tree and on your emails for further information. And don't worry if you didn't win. You can still join us at Mythodea. We're gonna tell you exactly how. Isn't that right, kid? We have something extra special here. One, if you're a runner-up in this contest and you don't end up winning, you're still gonna get a huge deal. Because if you choose to attend, the only thing you're gonna be responsible for paying for is your travel and then your camping. Everything else, Berg Snyder, the beginner's experience, all of that's gonna be covered for you. Then for everybody else in the Skill Tree community, there's gonna be a link underneath this video where you can get a discounted ticket. I'm really hoping a bunch of you can make it. Let's go as a Skill Tree group and invade the conquest. So we can't wait to see you on Conquest. Thank you all for participating in this amazing adventure that Level Up Love was and still is. Stay crafty. Ooh, it's been an exciting day, all right. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead and go take my dog of war out for a walk. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It is a fantastic way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members and honestly, we couldn't do any of this without them. They pay for things like leather for dog armor. Honestly, they're the best people on earth. 
Special shout out to our newest high tier level Patreon members, Joshua Callahan, The Cat, and Jacqueline Chanel. Thank you again, it means the world to us that you support what we do here. If you like what we do here and wanna support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos that YouTube thinks you like, and that'll help too. I have a, I have a bearded dragon. Think I could make armor for her?